Did this unexpected sleeper hit rare take Demir midrange to the best midrange deck in the meta? Hello and welcome back to another day in the arena. It's me, it's CGB, and today in the arena we are playing Demir midrange starring Cryptic Coat. This two and a blue artifact equipment enters the battlefield and cloaks the top card of your library, then attaches the coat to it. The equipped creature gets plus one plus oh and can't be blocked. For one and a blue, you can return Cryptic coat to its owner's hand yeah maybe i once made a video doing a little song and dance about how this is a limited card but there's more going on with this than you'd expect that ward 2 makes the card very hard to interact with so your first cloaked creature is likely to be on the board mono red can't just zap it out of the way most of the time uh the rest of the time you've got an unblockable attacker which goes really well with kaito shizuki and gix yogmoth's praetor to draw you a bunch of sweet cards on top of that you can keep returning the coat to your hand and playing it again to keep threats consistently entering the battlefield. One thing that the mid-range decks could run into against the control decks is running out of threats. Well, this deck doesn't have that problem as long as it has a coat in action, and there aren't a ton of ways to remove artifacts in the meta right now. It's a very shifty coat too. You can respond to removal by bouncing it to your hand if you were wise enough to keep it open. So the cryptic coat is at its absolute best in a creature deck deck and this creature deck runs a lot of little flyers to help get in and draw cards with gix it runs four copies of sheldred to beat up on mono red and it tries to just kind of knock out the big boros plays before they make them if you can use a deep cavern bat to take away their recruiter or their knight errant of eos that goes a long way because they don't run a ton of interaction themselves overall it adds a new dimension to mid-range that i think makes demir the best mid-range deck that you can play in best of one mid-range is very challenged in best of one for a number of reasons mostly the extremes of the format extreme control and extreme aggro being the best decks but this deck walks walks the line beautifully, and I think we're going to show off exactly why that works. But CGB, isn't black green midrange like a really good midrange, and isn't Atroxa ramp really good against midrange, and isn't combo really good? No questions! Let's embrace that there is hope for this pile, and go see it in action before we judge. So before we dive in, I want to talk to you about MagicCon Chicago. It's coming up this weekend, and my sponsors will be there. CoolStuffInc.com, where by the way, promo code CGB5, will have CGB playmats on hand. They're bringing more than they have to any other MagicCons, where every day they've sold out on day one. This time they'll have playmats available, hopefully enough to last through the weekend. So if you want a playmat for me to sign, go to the Cool Stuff Inc. booth and get the CGB Dino Rider playmat. Uh, on top of that, uh, we are doing a meet and beat with Ultimate Guard on Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. So make sure you come to the Ultimate Guard booth. You do not need a deck. You can bring a deck, but you don't have to. We should have standard decks available as well as, I think there was a modern deck available um i think that there were also some like classic standard decks available last time but the plan is to have some standard decks available that you can borrow you do not need a deck and if you beat me you get sweet ultimate guard stuff get there early there will probably be a line there was last time that's magic on chicago saturday 4 to 6 p.m meet and beat at the ultimate guard booth i will see you there now let's dive in let the nonsense begin our opponent is given the mono red vibes with those fiery Chandra eyes. Our hand is good. It's not great. It's on the draw and it doesn't have a two drop, which our deck has a lot of. No two mana play. Makes me worried, but we will keep it. Hey, a two mana play. If it's Boros, that is definitely the matchup I'm most concerned about but it seems to be a different type of Boros unless they're going Resolute Reinforcements. How do you use a go for the throat in this matchup? I think what I want to do is just get another Spyglass Siren down, which means we do this. No, we do this and this. Is that a good card against Boros? Not really, we need land. Okay, 
Okay, they don't have resolute reinforcements. It might be Boros control. Well, they don't have Helix either. Oh my goodness. So now that holds priority. Do I go for Yaw for Gix? I don't think I do. I think that that's a trap. I think this is a coat turn. Let's see what they do. Hello? We're probably looking at Lightning Helix. Like, what do I do with you? Coat! Put it on. All I want is to untap with a pretty good lead so I can Urtai next turn. By the way, there's a preacher under there. That's exciting. That's potential value. Opponent does nothing. Opponent plays Appraiser. It is Boros, probably controlish. Gotta look at these while they go by. Seraph, Virtue. Okay, this is the version that runs. Yeah, Angel Fire Ignition. So, it make big thing, it attack with big thing. Cool. Very, very cool. Oh, it can't block this anyway. Let's see what you do. Good, good patience. The fact that we have throat and make disappear means we can probably shut him down. Then use Urtai to protect the board after that. Close the game. I really want to see if they go for Angel Fire again, though. I do not. Well, we could just take the six. Like, they're at 15. We're racing them. If they pass doing nothing here, it's pretty bad for them. And we can play Urtai. We just have to have responses for the next crazy thing they do. All right, they play Assembler. Out of there. So now we're attacking them for eight. We don't even need to play the Gix. We just shut down what they do. I mean, they're the one who's about to die to unblockable damage, not us. Combat Thresher, three mana, one, one, draw a card. And then they still have three mana open. Okay, I mean, this can't, this can't save them. It can't block any of the six damage. Pass. Okay. Easy peasy. I think. Let's see what they've got. I go for lethal. Can't counter that. Urtai could have. Urtai could have. Okay. But they're still dead. I think. It's a little risky. But we go for it. Make them have an instant speed way to kill a Sheldred. Bang. Job's done. Scary hand, but we'll keep it. Lots of two mana plays. Hopefully the opponent gives us time to make cool things happen. Tyrant off the top. That's his cottage. Feels mid-rangey, doesn't it? So usually it's their three mana play that's really good. I might just hold up a make disappear or go for the throat for their three mana play. Get plenty of shielded solutions, but I don't want to be caught on the back foot. I think if I go for bat into open mana, they just kill it and I don't achieve much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm just gonna protect the info. I think that we'll end up killing something anyway. 
So we might just tilt them with this. Uh, I get a bat and you don't treatment. They might hate this enough. All right, so go for the throat, edict. We'll take the go for the throat. There are two shieldreds to worry about. We have two go for the throats. They have a preacher and they have a sentinel and they have no land. Do it if we can get some value. Mm, gotta bin that because we're down land. But now life linky bat. Eh? We know we're gonna give up the siren to the edict. Red Knight draw, no land. <laughs> this might be enough to tilt them. Hideous position for the opponent. They just have no time. I run a lot of lands in your mid range decks these days, man. When you get stuck on two, it's the worst. And now we untap with Urtai protection and this game is over. Back up, huh? Tell you what, I'll help you draw that land. It's too mean. <laughs> it's so mean. It's so cruel. Siren, Malcolm, Coat, Shieldred. I wish I were on the play. I'm a little scared. I'm always a little scared on the draw like this. This is why, especially with a pain land in hand. Oh God, they're casting play with fire without even seeing my turn one. Yeah, okay. Okay. Apparently a tough scry. You would think it was either I need a land or I don't need a land. This this one for some reason is a toughie. Mono Red just melted their own brain and kept on top. Okay, tapped land. But then we don't take pain. And I'm gonna go with that. It's not like the Spyglass Siren is going to prevent a lot of damage early. It's going to prevent damage late, probably with some kind of chump block. Opponent? <laughs> no regard for anything out here. I guess I'll prepare to Malcolm. Jays! Fire one, fire two. What else you got? You got the curve into the invasion that does four? Into a stoke the flames, perhaps? By God, they run planeswalkers. I guess now I wish I had the siren down, but it is what it is. Life total's a little higher because of it. Okay. I'd love to. Now they have to tank on whether or not to attack with a swift spear into open mana. Good god, their brain. Their brain must hurt. Let me help you out. I'm gonna do like this. We gotta kill that Chandra. Doing it with damage is probably the right way. The ward on this is really tough for them. We have life gain from the virtue, and if we live long enough, we have Shieldred. Just have to not die. And the opponent clearly has one plan. It's face. Okay. Lucky this is a warning shot. We got two cards, so it's gonna be three. Could have blocked Swift Spear. Didn't want to take the risk. Alright. Uh time to start blocking. You get rid of you. Nine health. This went you come on down. I know, could have drawn with Malcolm. I'd still rather block. Because that way I don't have to engage Shieldred in combat. If I put the Shieldred in combat, the Shieldred could die. If the Shieldred lives, I think I have a great chance. 
especially considering they didn't have a spell in combat last turn. They top deck that. I'm angry. I'm very salty. <laughs> nice draw. <laughs> Please don't kill me. Thank you. Oh my goodness, I might have melted down. Die. You're welcome to bring it back, but it needs to die right now. Keep the life total going up. I could sneak right by. <laughs> There's no secret I can't uncover. And back to eight. Sure. What else do you draw for it? A nice, 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 polite, kind, gentle clap for just main phase, mindless burn spells, endless tanks. A red mage truly finding their way in this world. On the play. Well, we'll need a land. But Siren does usually help with that. The question is, do I need a bat on turn two? Yeah, let's set up for a bat. Let's get right into this hand. I think that's better than a Malcolm. I'm honestly not sure. Okay, well now we have an idea of what we're up against. We need to find our make disappears or we need to hit our land drops up to the Urtai. What is going to help the opponent the most? I mean, I guess I have to take the Terror Tide. We cannot miss these land drops, though. The top deck of Rona, we do not miss the land drop. Now this turn, we have to make sure we don't miss the next land drop. That's the most important thing. So I'd love to play a coat, but I think it's wrong. Let's play Siren. And let's map token. Get as close as we can to another land and start the damage going. Because we need these Urtais. Urtais and Make Disappears are what will win this game. That Rhone is a real big problem, though. It lets them do the trick on our turn and then untap and try again. Oh, no. We're not going to get there. Not gonna get there. Unbelievable. Well, I did everything I could. They don't necessarily have the untapped land, but they will, right? They have the gazes. Maybe I should have taken the breach. But then they just terror tied away the bat, but that would have given me one more turn. I guess I was pretty optimistic about my chances. I don't regret that, though. Maybe they don't have the guts to go for it. But they will as soon as I go for Malcolm. Man, we were on the play. Like, we would have had very little chance on the draw, except drawing make disappear. But we were on the play and we didn't get it. Look how fast this deck is, by the way. They kept two on top. They might not have, what is the, uh, no, they kept on top. They must have it, right? The key card. Reenact the crime. They must have it. Oh, they discard a gaze. They don't have it. Okay, we get another chance. We get another chance. They know what was on top. They should have kept crime or land. So I'm sure they have a play here. There's no way they missed this land drop. It's impossible. They discard the tide. Ooh, ooh, okay. There's still, this holds priority, okay. Land, 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 land. Pack first. Kaido too slow. A 
The problem is they can go for it on our end step, untap and go for it again if they find another reenact the crime. But we can hope they don't. Yep, they're gonna wait. That's smart. They only get one more turn of this, so they have to find double reenact the crime now. Man, this deck is hard to play against. Drop a breach. I'm gonna teach you how to play against this. Resolve the exile. Put the so that breach is no longer in the graveyard. Could be huge later. Put the exiled breach on the stack. Now counter it. You got a breach out of the graveyard. It could matter. All right, let's see. Did they find another one? They would have had to draw two copies in their top 20. We saw their hand. They didn't have it earlier. Let's see what they can do. Discard breach. Cast reenact. Not not an inconvenience. Let's see what they get. They have flyers and they have an unraveler. They have an Atraxa. There's a virtue there. Do they have an untapped land? They do. They might virtue here. That would give them life points. That would probably put this game completely out of range. I can't remember if they played a land or not. I missed one land drop, then went to five. So they might have played a land this turn. And I was on the play. Okay. It might be safe. But I guess they can conspiracy it. See what they do. I hope they're just blinded by casting Breach a bunch of times. We can somehow sneak through, but it looks very unlikely here. 14 cards in their deck, 25 in mine. They hit a Shieldred. That's a lot of flyers. <laughs> I don't think we're going to sneak through. I wish I had been able to play the coat. I think I did what I had to do before, but yeah, having the coat down would have made a big difference. There's the life. Cast one more breach for me, please. One more breach. Please. Okay. Not good. If they had cast one more reach, we could mill them out with the reef. But uh, I think we can scoop. Uh, we had forced them to do it double. Uh, they did it. It wasn't even hard. Today's YouTube Cool Kids Club member shout out goes to Ronnie Ivans. Ronnie, you spent one year as a Cool Kids Club member. You were there before it was cool. Thank you very much. If you would like to see my videos 24 hours early and get access to members only live streams, hit the join button below. It's only $4.99 a month. And there's, you know, probably some bad Disney Plus show you could be watching or you could be watching more me. 
That's cool, right? Anyway, this deck, Demir Coat. I do think that this is the best mid-range deck in the format. The other decks that compete with it, like Golgari, need a lot of help. When taking on a full, powerful control deck, my best advice is to try to play the coat early and aggressively. Don't worry so much about it getting removed because there aren't a lot of convenient ways to remove it. And my advice about playing the deck against aggro is try to play the coat early and aggressively because they have hard trouble getting that creature out of the way and you can reload it later as soon as you have mana to spare. The big queen, of course, is Shieldred the Apocalypse against aggro. And playing the coat, this is something I didn't actually get to mention in the intro. Playing the coat and cloaking a creature gives you another chance to draw a Shieldred because you're either a card closer to a Shieldred on top of your deck or you cloak a Shieldred and you can flip it up the next turn for four mana. So getting as close to a Shieldred as possible is usually a really good move. In other words, be more aggressive with your Cryptic Coat and uh, have a counter at the right time against Against the control decks, against the combo and ramp decks, it's tough. And I do think that this might be the best mid-range deck. I'll, I'm going to give you a hint of the future. I don't think it's the best Demir deck. The combo deck for Demir is getting really good. Stay tuned to the channel. I'll have a little bit of content for you in the future on that deck. As we come to the end of the video, a reminder about MagicCon Chicago. Make sure you visit the Cool Stuff Inc. booth and get yourself a playmat before they sell out. And then come to my meet and beat on Saturday from 4 to 6 p.m. at the Ultimate Guard booth. I'll happily sign anything that you bring up there and see what you've got. Do you have what it takes to challenge the one in best of one? Thank you for watching this video. As always, I will see you in the next video. You're cool. Playmat! Yes! We have the Covert Go Blue Dinosaur Rider Playmat. You can get this sweet playmat and the sweet new token as well in a bundle at coolstuffinc.com slash CGB. That's Covert Go Blue HQ. Coolstuffinc.com slash CGB. Get yours today for the easy price of $19.99.